So, it, you know, if, I'm not a geologist uh, by any standard, but I'm sure any geologist in the room, when you look at a geological formation, you see more than what it meets the eye, right? Most people will look at this and they'll just see a beautiful scenery and a beautiful mountain. And it's all a matter of perspective. A geologist would know that there's a lot of untapped value somewhere in that formation. And being able to find that information and that value is where the challenge lies, right? If we extend this analogy to an iceberg, if we look at the internet as a whole and all the unmanaged, unstructured information out there on the internet, the tip of the iceberg is what we see on the internet. This is what we can search with Google and what's publicly accessible to us. The public web represents only about 4% of the content that's unstructured that's available to us today. Most of the unstructured information that's out there where we can get good value from is actually within our organizations behind the firewall. And this is a old, rather old number, actually. This is a number from the very beginning of 2011, but they had 7.9 zettabytes. Um, I mean, this is millions of gigabytes of information out there that's behind company firewalls. At OpenText, we refer to that as the deep web. Um, some people might be referring to that as the big data challenge. But we see that there's a convergence happening, right? So when most people talk about big data, they're talking about operational data, stuff that's in databases, and how do we manage that? And a lot of that information that we're getting from big data is coming from all the sensors and all this automation, all the telemetry systems that we have out there analyzing our production systems. But think about all of the documents and the decisions that you make in unstructured documents like emails or contracts or engineering drawings, standard operating procedures, inspection reports. How do you analyze that information and capture the value from that? And if you're not managing that information, you're really not tapping in to your business's knowledge. You're not tapping into the value that you can get out of your business. I'm sure everybody's heard about WikiLeaks and Julian Assange. Um, Wikilinks is where poor information management goes wrong, right? You didn't secure your information, that information was leaked out. So it's important for organizations to protect their intellectual property. But it's not just about that, it's just about managing that information in a way that makes sense to your organization. So you have access to it and you can protect it. There's a balance there that you have to strike. So, I think the big challenge is that enterprises are looking for ways to unlock the value of their information. You've got it all spread out across your organization in your email inboxes, in your shared drives. Some of it may actually be tied to your engineering systems. It may be in systems like Bentley or Aviva, maybe inside your ERP system. But there's no way to really aggregate that content and it's in these different silos around your organization. So how can you access it? How can I make sure that an engineer has access to the correct financial data or the correct contract? How do I know that a project manager can see what the scope was that was negotiated in that contract and effectively manage scope changes in the contract throughout a concurrent engineering procurement and construction phase of a capital project or a maintenance project? So you need to be able to look at how can I, we tap into the value of that information and manage that information effectively. Just wanted to give you an example. Um, so at OpenText, we do social media as well, right? So kind of Facebook for business, web content management, mobile applications. And a lot of businesses say, well, especially resource companies, they say, well, we don't really do that. We're concerned about security. We don't want to share our information. We want to protect our information. Well, if you look at um, an example here, there's two examples I want to talk about. One is from Goldcorp. So Gold, Goldcorp offered, um, they had some um, mines that were basically declared dead. Their internal engineers, external consultants that they brought in to analyze the geological data, basically said, you've tapped these mines out, that's the end of it, you've got to decommission them. And they didn't want to accept that. So what they did is they actually offered a prize and they put out their information, all the geological reports and surveys, and they put all that information out 
to um, a number of universities. I think it was 12 different universities, and they offered a $50,000 prize to um, any university that could find more resources. And what they ended up tapping into was tens of millions of dollars of extra value out of those mines. Now, Barrett Gold has done a similar thing, and they've basically doing what we call crowdsourcing. They're putting this information out on the web, offering $500,000 in prizes, and this has led to over $3 billion in new discoveries. So this is an example where they've taken all this information and put it out there, pulled it together. They didn't know what the value was in that information, but they allowed other people access to it to capture the value. So there can be a lot of hidden value in your information within your organization. And it's just getting it in the hands of the right people where you can actually capture the value of it. As I say, it's, it's a delicate balance. There's a balance between getting the value out of that information, and there's a balance between the risk and the liability. Um, I was talking to the CIO of a major resource company last week, and what he said to me, he said, we're not in the business of exploration and production. We're in the risk management business. And that's in the business of, it, it, the risks go as far as how do we analyze this data so that we know which resources to put into production? How do we manage that production in a way that we're limiting our liability and our risk, whether it's environmental risk, whether it's HSC noncompliance? It's all about risk management. That's how they viewed information management challenge for them. We think it's much more than that at Open Text, but it is, that's where our legacy comes in enterprise content management is around risk management, compliance, and records management. But what I'm gonna to talk to you about today is where you're gonna capture the most value out of your information and where you're gonna take away the burden of information management. Um, a lot of that burden lies in how do I organize that information? How do I structure those emails or those contracts? Where do I put them so that other people can access them or that, so that I can protect them? So if we look at a resource company, um, there's a couple of areas that we look at addressing your challenges around information management. There's capital projects, right? So it's one of the major challenges of a capital project is actually um, the relationship of all that information that's man being managed by EPC contractors, by the uh, vendors and equipment suppliers, and the owner operator themselves. It's the interchange and the collaboration around that information but it's also the handover of that information from the project to the operational state. So making sure that your production, your maintenance, your asset management systems are correctly populated in a way that you can manage that facility throughout its life cycle. And so there's a lot of risk in not capturing that information early in a capital project, not managing it effectively, and there's a lot of cost and lost production time in handover. So it's a challenge that you face, and this is one area where you can gain value by addressing that problem of capital projects management. There's asset management and operational excellence. So if you look at oil and gas industry or the mining industry, they're really driven by process, right? What, what separates one company from another is often, well, which resources they can get into production first, but in the long term, it's actually how do they get the most value out of that resource? How do they optimize production so they're getting the best value? So we spend a lot of time and money on process optimization and technological innovation around those processes, but there's a lot of processes within the general administration of our organization where we can capture that same value. So we can achieve business process excellence, not just um, engineering process excellence or industrial process excellence. And a lot of that can be tied to your asset management processes. So if you think about asset management, it's making sure that that asset is opt operating at peak efficiency, it uh, has minimal downtime, and when you do do scheduled maintenance or unscheduled maintenance, you want to do that as efficiently as possible. So collaborating around those maintenance projects, making sure that everything's documented correctly, so you're, again, you're minimizing your risk after that project's done, that you have the right configuration documented. Customer relationship management, 
probably not a big challenge for most of you, but it, it is a challenge, right? Because at the end of the day, you are in the business of selling products. So managing that relationship with your suppliers and your customers is very important. And there's a lot of flow of critical documentation going back and forth. You know, as I mentioned, the contracting situation. There can be situations that there's an example where a contract wasn't renewed on a mining tenement. Somebody walked into the registrar, paid $100, and took over a mining tenement from a major mining company. That company ended up spending tens of million dollars to get that tenement back because somebody forgot to renew the lease. Right? So very simple problem, but it was actually related to contract management, customer relationship management. Corporate social responsibility. Um, obviously, companies are concerned about their reputation and their brand. But you're also worried about when you undertake a project in, a, say, the Northern Territory, um, there might be issues around um, the local community, um, around the local government. And so you have to engage those stakeholders in a way that's meaningful. And so a lot of tools are available today using social media and mobile technology, web technology, to help you manage that corporate social responsibility better. And compliance. Um, there's every, every company in this room, I'm sure, has at some point faced a dispute or a claim. Um, they've had issues of non-compliance. And certainly everyone here has had the challenge of regulatory submissions. There's a lot of information there, but it's also it's an ongoing battle to make sure that you're doing the right things with your information to remain compliant, to prove your due diligence. And in the case of a dispute, having an audit trail of that whole history of that information so that you can pr prove that you're not negligent. So where do you get the most value? And I think at Open Text, you know, we've spent a lot of time around compliance. Um, that's been our 20-year legacy is really around how to solve the challenge of unstructured information management and compliance. Um, but where we see you're going to get the most value is actually linking your content and your process processes together. So if you look across the value chain, this is uh, not anywhere a comprehensive example, but there's lots of processes that bridge across the entire value chain in your organization. Some of them are general administrative or horizontal business processes. Other ones are tied more to your core business. Now I'm going to talk a bit today about asset operations and maintenance just around some of those processes to show you the value of information management, how to manage, why you should be managing that unstructured information and I'll also show you how you can do certain best practices to link processes and content together to get the most value out of that information. So here's a sample process around asset management. This is a simple maintenance notification process, right? So you start out with a maintenance notification. There's information that's unstructured information that's attached to that. You could have maintenance plans or as-built plant documentation or monitoring records that you have to refer to once you get that maintenance notification. You could have operator logs. You might have photos coming from the field because uh, something damaged. Maybe there's a storm damaged a piece of equipment. So you take a photo and open up a maintenance notification for that. There's lots of unstructured information, management, unstructured information happening there. When you create the work order, the person who's uh, issuing that, issued that work order may want to go out and see what spare parts are available. So where do they have to go to that? Do they have to go to your ERP system to find that or some other database? They want to be able to find the material specifications, possibly the contract or the original order documentation for that spare part. They may want to look at shipment documents and vendor invoices. A lot of this information is sitting in different silos within your organization today. But how can I tie that into that process so it's available at the right time to the right person so correct decisions can be made uh, and much faster? Once we get into shutting down the piece of equipment or shutting down your production line so that you can perform the repair, it may be that that piece of equipment actually failed before it's, um, it originally should have. And so you may want to spawn off a separate business process around reliability engineering or failure analysis. And so you could have to be um, speaking with the suppliers and documenting that failure analysis and how do you manage that information again? 
And then when you actually go to recommission the asset, you've completed the repair, you've got to update your asset documentation and make sure that your configuration management and your management of change activities are being covered off. And you could have checklists and standard operating procedures and inspection reports that you want to record as well. So as you can see, through a very simple business process, there's lots of different information that could need to be referred to or managed or captured. And there could even be other sub-business processes that are not currently managed by your system. So they're either being done manually um, and, and it's causing people to refer to standard operating procedures. Um, and it could even be even more uncontrolled than that. But how do you extend these processes and extend that information in a way? And this is where we think the greatest value is. So at OpenText, we're bringing process and content together to, to um, deliver solutions to customers, okay? So where we see great value is actually tying into your core business systems. Now, these are sort of major technology platforms. These are our three biggest partnerships. So we have um, integration and a common product roadmap around SAP, around Oracle, and around the Microsoft platform. So the Microsoft platform is more about how do I present that information to the end user? Is it through Microsoft Outlook, through Windows, uh, sort of Microsoft Office, or is it through SharePoint? That's the Microsoft partnership. Where the real strength comes from is the SAP and Oracle partnerships. We can tie directly into those business processes. We can tie into other systems as well. If you're using Maximo, we can tie into that system as well. And we can tie the content to the process, but we can also extend the business process using our, our own process engine. But there's a lot of value there because what you're doing is you're identifying documentation that's of critical business value in the context of that process. So you're not asking people to go out and organize things in a separate context, in a separate repository. They have access to it and they can capture it in the context of that business process. So we call it enterprise information management. And so when you start doing effective enterprise information management, what do you gain as an organization? You gain critical business insight. It's about having the right information at the right time. It gives you insight into the problem, into prior business decisions, so you can make an informed decision. Gives you business impact. So it can affect your top line revenue or it can affect your bottom line in the sense of you're making your um, operation more efficient, right? So you have positive impact on your business, on your customers, and on your revenue. You get process velocity. So by bringing information, the correct information into the process, you can actually speed up the decision making and speed up the delivery. And because we have a legacy of enterprise content management, you get collaboration within that process that you might not have had before. You can collaborate with people outside of the business tool, right? So not everybody in your organization is using Maximo or using SAP or using Oracle. Um, you've got guys with big gloves out in the field who don't want to learn that system and you're not going to spend the effort to teach them. But they may need that information. So how do you get it to them without giving them that complex tool? And we can do that. And we can accelerate and extend the business process with other process control around what used to be manual processes. You get information governance. So this is kind of the legacy of open text. But it's really critical to managing your risk that you, are, you have a history and of all the changes to that asset or to that documentation, that you can prove due diligence and that you can do records management and meet your regulatory reporting requirements. And you get information security. Um, nobody wants to leak out their intellectual property. This is your competitive advantage. And you need to know who's accessing what. So what are some typical content-related business processes that you can tie into? I mean, there's a few questions you can ask yourself. Um, what processes do you rely on documentation, right? So is it contract management? That's an obvious one. I'm going to rely on lots of paper-based documentation that goes back and forth through fax machines and what have you, or email. Um, and I need to track that. I need to track the changes. And in the context of um, the resources sector, a lot of stuff is done concurrently, right? So you've got concurrent engineering, procurement, and construction. It increases the risks and challenges around that. 
Are your documents being managed outside the systems that are part of the process? Are people involved in the process that are working outside the systems or in different organizations? And what documents need to be preserved as corporate records? So these are questions you can ask yourself as an organization. And if the answer is yes to any one of them or all four, certainly, uh, you're going to want to look at how can I integrate enterprise information management in that process. And here's some examples. So you've got quality management. So we have companies like Cameron who do valves um, and equipment, uh, flow equipment for uh, oil and gas sector. They're using our solution to manage their quality management processes. We've got project engagement management, logistics and construction management. So we've got lots of customers, um, ConocoPhillips, Hatch, Asenco, a variety of customers that are using our solution to do capital projects management. You've got plant maintenance, supply chain management, whole range of processes that you can look at within your organization. So to talk a bit more about this asset management scenario, so it's not just about managing the content around the asset itself, right? There's a lot of solutions out there today that even the asset management systems themselves, like Maximo or JD Edwards Enterprise One or SAP that can store the documents pertaining to that asset right in the context there. But it's much more than that. You'll get a lot more value if you can actually integrate the other business processes that are related to asset management. And that's what we call enterprise information management. It's being able to have all of that information and those relationships in the context at the time. So if I'm looking at a functional location or a piece of equipment, I don't just see the technical documentation about that. I can see the material data specifications from the material workspace. I can see the spare parts that are available. And if there's no spare parts available, I can go to the supplier and I can see what alternate suppliers are there and be able to track down a spare part. So I can turn around that repair much quicker because I have access to that information and I can draw those relationships from any interface. If we're talking about capital projects management or major shutdown turnaround activities, you want to be able to link to your project scheduling and your project controls. So being able to tie that back to your asset management and back to your product management is really critical. So we can tie supply chain and project management, material management, asset management, product management, and customer relationship management all back to that process out of the box. So you heard in the earlier presentation about the integration challenge. Well, there is no integration challenge. We've done the integration for you. Now it's just about what content do I put into that? So the old paradigm was I would have my enterprise content management system over here. And I would have my ERP and my enterprise asset management system over here. And what we're doing is bringing those two worlds together and all the capabilities of them out of the box so that you get business processes that are specific, that link the content and the process together. And so we've done a lot of work around project management, procurement, quality management, enterprise asset management, and many others. We started out with financial um, and uh, workforce management applications. Those were kind of the horizontal ones. Now we're moving into vertical applications for your industry. So you got a lot of efficiency out of linking that content and process together. Now this is probably the, one of the most technical slides you're going to see today. I tried not to get it too far into the product. But if you look at a business object in your ERP system, for example, or in your enterprise asset management system, you've got some data around that object. You've got some roles and responsibilities that are defined. You've got transactions and a history of events all linked to that object. And what we want to do is link content. But we can link much more. You can link metadata from other business systems or into that unstructured content and back to the business objects. So you can link the data between the two systems. We give you a predefined folder structure so you don't have to think about how should I be organizing that. We actually use the folder structure of the business object to derive where you store your information. So if you're in asset management, you're used to looking in your asset management system by functional location and by piece of equipment. Once you do that, that structure is mimicked in the enterprise content management system, so you just can go and store content or browse content there. We link in all that content, 
and we bring along the core capabilities of collaboration, workflow, and records management and compliance. So it's all transparent. So I can extend that process and I can organize that content seamlessly attached to every business object. So as soon as I create a new pump or I create a new um, piece of equipment in my fleet, it's going to create this whole structure below here where you can start managing the content. And we can create relationships, as I showed you on the previous slide, between other business objects. So I can see the related material data management and the supplier information in the context of that asset as well. And we allow non-ERP or enterprise asset management systems uh, users to access that content because we create this concept of a separate workspace that links the content from both systems together. So when we talk about SAP, we're so tightly integrated with SAP that we actually store, both, of, both systems store the content in the same place in our archive when you integrate the two systems. And we give users access to any interface. So if you're on a mobile device, if you're on an iPad or a Blackberry, you can access the content and the system data from the, that process. You can access it from Microsoft Outlook. So if I receive an email that has um, the signed contract, the warranty, and some material data specifications for that particular piece of equipment we just bought, I can drag those con documents into the correct places right from my email client. I don't have to go somewhere else. If, I, if I'm in Microsoft Office and I'm creating a spreadsheet or Word document, I can save that directly into the system. If I'm an engineer in a, in a CAD tool or I'm a GIS user, same thing. And if I'm a SAP Oracle or SharePoint user, again, we tie it all together. So what this does is, you know, I mentioned we, you don't have to think about where to store the information. You're not managing your information in some other structure over here with, the, with these documents in that structure separate from the process. The documents actually get stored in the context of the process they apply to, which ensures that they're in the right place at the right time. And this concept of template workspaces can be applied anywhere across the process. This is showing asset management. So we can have a project workspace, supplier workspace, notification, work order, material, facility workspace. These are templates that are pre-built, but you can create one for any business object. So as soon as that object is created in your process or a new process is launched for a new work order, this workspace gets created and all the related documents for that asset for that work order are tied into it automatically. So I'm almost done here. I, mean, I don't want to be the guy standing between you and lunch. Um, so I just showed you enterprise asset management. So as an organization, you can decide where in your organization you want your roadmap to start. But you can basically go any, you can start anywhere. You could start with product lifecycle management or materials management or procurement and then work your way around in this roadmap. And you can end up with a holistic solution for managing information management in the context of all your core business processes. And so it's not about operational data today. That's not where we are today. It's about all the unstructured information tied to that business process. And so where is open text today? This is my one product slide. <laughs> um, we started out with enterprise content management. We moved into the world of business process management over the last decade with tying into SAP and um, building our own proprietary B BPM engines. But we also have much more to offer. So we view enterprise information management as five pillars. You have content management, business process management, customer experience management, which is web, mobile, and social. So everything we do can be available on a mobile device be deployed in the cloud or through the web um, and has a social media component to it. So you can start getting knowledge management happening within your organization around your processes and your content. We have secure information management exchange. So it's at the core of what we do that compliance and security are there. So we're not a Dropbox. We're not an AConnex. We are a secure enterprise solution that's going to make sure that your information and intellectual property are protected. And that if, when you talk about information exchange, 
that at the end of that capital project or that maintenance project, that the information is seamlessly and securely handed over to the owner operator. And we have e-discovery in the unlikely, well, not the unlikely, in the sad event that you get involved in a dispute or a claim or a non-compliance issue, you have the tools at your disposal to find the information and prove your due diligence. So thank you very much. That was my short presentation on enterprise information management.